Hi, it's Alexis. And Christian from Tiny House Expedition. And we built our tiny house way back in 2014. With the help of friends and family, over nine months of ups and downs and trial and error, it was all worth it in the end. We built a cozy custom home of our own that led us to an adventure of a lifetime. And now we're working on a shuttle bus conversion. In our DIY Tiny Home Build Stories series, we hope to inspire and empower you to take on your own build by yourself or with help. I needed help. I, de <laughs> I definitely needed help. I'm Kate. Hi, my name is Brad. Uh, this is our tiny house on wheels. We call it the BK Lounge. The tiny house was definitely an evolution of both of our like uh, goals and thoughts. Um, we were living in San Francisco, and uh, we were just like faced with you know really high rent and high like cost of living, and we started exploring some other options. And this one was really appealing to us. And we've uh, our, I don't want to say minimalist, but like we are you know good at living like a reduced lifestyle and. We had already uprooted our lives so many times, sort of at that point, just minimizing our possessions. It just felt kind of like a natural transition. But also we were like chatting about this, like, how did it start? And um, I had a high school English teacher that I just adored. And she had posted that she had gone to see a cinema tiny when it was released. And we're like, oh, it's just came out on Netflix. Like, let's watch it. And of course, then we were just like smitten with the idea, like both of us just at the same time, like we watched that movie and we're like, yeah. Like, you know, it just aligned for us both immediately. And then after that, it was just scheming for the next couple of years. Yeah. Uh-huh. Designed and built the whole thing ourselves. Kay was extremely influential in all of it as well. Um, and we had like this, we've had so many different iterations, honestly. Uh, so the first one was like 24 feet long. Now we're down to, you know, 15 feet with a two foot bar on the end there. And yeah, it was just a, an experiment and kind of like, I think we challenged ourselves a lot to like reduce weight and reduce cost and kind of like, you know, push ourselves to see how efficient we could make it. And a lot of that was based on, you know, materials and based on like heating and cooling it and like creating a really comfortable space as well. So this tiny house is yeah 17 feet long with on a trailer and eight and a half feet wide. That's only 12 feet and like three inches tall. And uh, you know, we were also thinking about how we're gonna move it. We always had this idea that we we're gonna potentially move it up to Portland after we're done in Tucson. So we knew it was gonna take a long journey and we want to be really uh, road worthy. And that's kind of how we got to this size. And then for this kind of footprint of the home here in the living area, we were always really interested in having a Murphy bed, but then also having like a square proportions. So not doing so much of the galley style, knowing it's gonna be two of us at all times and both of us being really comfortable and being able to function in this room. That was the big goal for us. So we built in Tucson, Arizona, and uh, we had a, just an amazing kind of experience with the build and so many great people helped us with it. We were renting like a little guest unit at a friend's house and then right next door on the property next door we were able to build the tiny house out right there and they had a, a workshop and a ton of tools and then like just on top of all that they helped us so much on the build and I'm just going through like photos recently of it and like every photo has a different person in there like helping us on it mm -hmm. and it's just so cool they were also a contractor and so he was able to help me with you know, plumbing electrical and all the kind of the heavy hitters on the project but yeah it's such a rewarding process to like build it and see a little more happen each weekend and you know you spend the week kind of researching the new thing and getting supplies and then you know just getting after it on the weekend. And, yeah. yeah, we both worked full time and it took us about a year and eight months all together, including part of the time we were just living in it before it was done.
We took a long time to deliberate over our siding, but we had a really strong idea of what we wanted the outdoor aesthetic to be of our home. And we were really inspired by the space that we were building in, in the desert. So we ended up choosing some lightweight metal to sort of go along with keeping the tiny house really lightweight. And then we got to experiment with Shusugi Bon burning these panels. And that was really kind of fun to play with fire. We like the corrugated aspect. It's, it actually creates like a little shade on the wall. It's influenced from looking at saguaro cactus actually in the desert and they have the same corrugated pattern that wraps around and it's actually to cast a little shade in the little valleys of the saguaros. So a little node to that from our time in the desert. But it's a super resilient and very low maintenance material. We kind of ordered it to length, so you just throw up a few panels and you're done with the siding in a couple hours. Yeah, we had very minimal scraps, so there wasn't a lot of waste associated with most of our build, which was really gratifying too. On this wall here, not only is there a concealed door for the bathroom, there's also a concealed Murphy bed. And let me show you how that opens up. So uh, first thing, you take these long pillows off. And then there's the secret latch up here for safety, but it doesn't fall down until you pull it down. Kind of a DIY Murphy bed system with some big boat swivels and some hinges or some hydraulic struts to ease in the lifting and lowering of the bed. But it's a full size bed and then it exposes all this extra storage space behind the bed whenever it's down. This is good for hanging storage in the back closet. We keep some sleeping bags tucked up in the top. It's, it's still vaulted up there so we have a lot of space. And then we have hats on display and then we each have our own nightstands. So with a built-in reading light and then we customize it with our own knickknacks on the sides. One side has an outlet on it over there by the wall. We have an Orego stovetop and oven here, and we actually kept the stovetop detached so that we can take it outside to cook on nice warm days here in Portland, which has just been a big game changer. It's really nice having that versatility. Having a little oven as well is really nice. And when we were doing our tiny house research, a lot of the people we were finding actually used the Orego stoves. And I'm not sure if that was more of like a trend a while ago, like early on in the tiny house movement. But this Orego stove and oven is actually designed for use on sailboats. So it's 100% stainless steel and it runs off of denatured alcohol. So we get like a big denatured alcohol tin and we fill up, there's little canisters inside that you fill up. And that's one of the ways in which we've been able to stay off propane in this house. So we don't use any propane, it's just electrical for the energy and then the denatured alcohol for the stove and the oven. There were definite challenges like I think there were emotional challenges like some of the times like you realize like how much time you're you're giving to this project and because we're like people who love to go camping and you know go and travel like you do have to think about that right like most of our weekends like 98 percent of them were dedicated to building the tiny house and that I guess was a challenge but it's funny thinking of like the actual build challenges because now like for plus years later, you know, you just don't even think about it. Like those mountains just mm -hmm. feel like just nothing. Like it, it Yeah, we were just like happened to be kind of looking back on some stuff and it was we had to relearn that like our siding or like roofing was like delayed or something. By a like, month. And I remember it being tragic because it was right around monsoon season and we're like, oh great, now we have to buy a bunch of tarps, like cover up the house. There were times where it was like two steps forward, one step back. And yeah. that was like you know, just learning curve behind it all. and Big yeah. learning curve. So that was probably one of the biggest challenges. Yeah, yeah, learning, like just constant learning, really. Mm -hmm. And every part of the build was so different too, right? Like you're like, okay, I just like figured out this one thing. And then all of a sudden you're done with it and you're just doing something so different. So like each skill wasn't actually transferable. Like you were really just learning all these new skills all the time. I think we kind of calculate everything to come out to around $23,000.
then we had some cost to kind of pull it up here and the deck was the last piece that we added on there. So about another thousand for that. So yeah, we feel like really good about the cost and that was a goal that we were aiming for. We started February, 2017 <laughs> and we finished, yeah, about midway through uh, 2018. But yeah, I think the costs have gone up significantly since then. So yeah, I feel fortunate to have done it that time. And we were able to be pretty choosy. Like we got some like, you know, FSC certified wood and formaldehyde free. Like we were able to be choosy, like whereas now, like, you know, with ply, like we use a lot of plywood in here that could be prohibitive, like, you know, to make those more conscientious choices too about like having a lower VOC home. Yeah, I could just see like there being certain trade-offs. So we do feel really fortunate that we were able to build, keep to our budget and still choose materials that also aligned with our goals for the home. Yeah, too. it's so nice when you only are building such a small space because you really get to like prioritize the materials you pick and kind of like go a little higher end on things. And um, you know, one thing we did on the whole outside was we did like metal siding and it's such a durable finish and it can pre-finished and it's maintenance free. And yeah, I always feel like it's going to help this house last a long time. For our house maybe specifically, but I'm sure this happens with all couples and tiny houses is, you know, you learn uh, so much about each other, but then you also um, learn that you need to be like on the same schedule kind of with things. So, Especially in this tiny yeah, house. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, with the Murphy bed, you know, we're getting up at the same time, we're going to bed at the same time. And that's what makes this lifestyle work so well for us is we're on the same schedule. I think that's a big takeaway and something to consider if you're, uh, you know, getting ready to mm. take on a project like this with a partner. Yeah, and especially if you're thinking of building a tiny house without a loft. Like, we love the Murphy bed and we love the scale it creates in this home too, like high ceilings, but having the space be really open. But yeah, like if you need that separation of space at all, like then that's just an important consideration. Like I could see how a loft could be really handy if you have different schedules or, you know, you both need to work from home. When we were thinking about the design, one of the elements that was really important to us is actually this couch that we're sitting on, is like we adore L-shaped couches. And when we were looking for inspiration, often we were seeing small couches and we're like, no, we want like, we want a big couch, you know, even if it's in a small space and uh, we want it to feel loungy, you know, somewhere where you can just like plop down at the end of the day. So this was sort of like one of the elements that we designed around, but then also the Murphy bed. That was something that came pretty early on, like after we were like, scrapped the 24 foot trailer idea and we're like let's go small pretty immediately we're like let's let's but every iteration bed. had like an l-shaped couch with murphy bed yeah. <laughs> that folded down on it yeah. so yeah we kind of made some choices to not use propane in this build so we're just like electric only you know back to the efficiency of the build trying to like have a low impact not a big power draw we're using little water as possible we have a wet bath we have a foot pedal faucet and i think these are all like moves to like kind of reduce our water intake so think about do you want this as like a short-term living solution or a long-term living solution and really give that a lot of consideration and that can change like whether or not you consider that but our lives are changing right now we're expecting and we're really excited about that but when we designed and built our tiny house we kind of thought that wasn't in our future and so that's why we kept scaling it back and saying like what do we need just the two of us and we didn't think about the potential of this being a flexible space if our lives changed. And it's just a really precise build, so there's not a lot of room to change it or adapt it. And so that's a big lesson for me. And then also, when things like a pandemic happen, we thought this was like our launching pad for the outdoors. And suddenly it's like a space that we spend the majority of our time in. And actually like we came to have a really good relationship with our tiny during that time where we're like oh you know it is nice and airy and like you know we don't feel cramped in here and luckily we had this like built-in desk because i work full-time from home but like that wasn't a consideration of ours and i think the last couple of years have taught everybody a lot of lessons but just really thinking about like how adaptable your space is and what you might need to make it you know the most effective version of your living space
Hey, it's Alexis again. And Christian from Tiny House Expedition. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And to watch the full tour of the DIY tiny home you just learned about, click over here.